Live, our parent company, or our advertisers. Welcome back. Tonight we're talking about the expansion of Medicaid here in the state of North Dakota due to the Affordable Care Act, i.e. Obamacare. For those of you that may not be aware, Medicaid is the disease management program for low-income individuals. Medicare is the disease management system for elderly individuals. With us tonight to talk more about this for live from Bismarck is Senator Judy Lee and also Senator Tyler Axness. Uh, Senator Julie is the chairman of the Human Services Committee. Thanks to both of you so much for joining us. Before we jump into questions, I do want to share a, a quick bit of information with you and our audience. We can bring that graphic back up, please. One of the shocking things about Medicaid is it's considered really an entitlement program. It's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest drivers of our federal debt. You can see here over the last 45 years, $3.7 trillion underfunded. Why? because there's no dedicated revenue line to Medicaid. If you look at Medicare, at least you're paying taxes and to help pay for that. Medicaid comes out of our general fund. There is no dedicated revenue to that. Senator Lee, I want to start with you because here's the situation. A lot of Republicans had to sort of plug their nose to vote for this. You look at we're $16 trillion in debt as a nation right now. Here we are going to take more money from the federal government. We all know one of the most basic principles of Republicans is, hey, the best government is the most local government, the government closest to you. Isn't it hypocritical for you and Republicans to vote yes in this bill and take this federal money? I don't think it's at all critical, excuse me, hypocritical to do that for a variety of reasons. One is that we've looked very carefully at what the costs are to individuals in the state, employers, employees, and health care providers if we don't do it. And there will be significant penalties to the uh, uh, employers that are in the state, there will also be penalties to individuals who do not sign up for insurance, and there will be a lot of reimbursement loss for hospitals who are already doing millions and millions of dollars of charity care. In the, in the meantime, we have a gap that has existed because of the Supreme Court ruling that means nobody at 100% of poverty or less, and that's only a little over $15,000 a year for an individual has any benefits at all because it was assumed that the expansion of Medicaid would be universal and it would all be there. So the people who need care the most will get none of it. As a result, the hospitals and clinics will be continuing to have the kind of charity care that they've always had, perhaps even more, coming to their doors. And yet, in the federal health care law, there will be lower reimbursements for them. So that only creates kind of a perfect storm in the event of costs. So we look at this as actually providing some opportunities and benefits for employers, employees, individuals, and health care providers, as well as the individuals who did not have health coverage that are very low income. Senator Axis, I want to uh, invite you to question this as well. You, you were quoted as saying uh, Medicaid expansion would inc could increase coverage to thousands of North Dakotans who don't have it. Why don't these people have coverage? Well, Chris, uh, you know, there's a number of reasons that people uh, are unable to attain uh, health care access in the state. And that can be because uh, they're working a job that doesn't provide uh, the coverage in their benefit package, or it's because they're not working enough hours. And some of these people, they're working at our local gas stations or working at uh, our supermarkets, and they're not getting uh, either the adequate funds to purchase their own, or there are other vehicles that just prohibit uh, the access to it. And Medicaid expansion, uh, is going to expand the eligibility rates uh, up to 138 percent of poverty and we're talking uh, for a family of one or a single individual that's between fifteen thousand and sixteen thousand dollars a year uh, you know these are working north dakotans that just because of the the options that they have when it comes to their employment are unable to attain the health care access that they need but here's my question i mean aren't we just really putting a band-aid on this situation you look you just saw or heard the numbers i mentioned and the driver is obviously health care costs. And by saying, hey, let's just expand this, we're not really getting to the root of the problem. We're not talking about health. We're just saying, hey, let's just put more money on this. We can have a more money towards a disease management system. Why is there nothing in this? This is a question for both of you. And Senator Axis, I want to start with you. Why is there not more in this conversation? But hey, let's actually get to the root of the problem and talk about having better health for individuals. Well, I think that is, uh, I agree that that's the underlying problem of our overall health care industry is that we're not doing enough preventative care 
at the moment now. We're treating uh, an illness after it's occurred, and I think that we have incentives within the Affordable Care Act and hopefully within our Medicaid expansion program that the state of North Dakota has modeled uh, to make sure that the people are getting the health care that they need up front, which is eventually going to reduce the cost in the long run. Senator Lee, I want to give you the last word on this. We're going to come back and talk about the diversion in a moment. Anything else, Senator Lee, you want to add about this Medicaid expansion? I think it's important to know that 75% of the people who are, are going to be covered under this are members of working families. These are people who are making very modest incomes, who are not able to get health insurance through their employers, and, if the, and the employers are going to be obligated to pay up to $3,000 per employee in fines if they don't provide it and the employees will not have coverage uh, on the exchange if they make less than 138 percent of poverty. The goofy thing about this is because of the way it's set up, if you're making $16,000 a year, with the exchange you can get a subsidy and pay only $320 a year for your insurance. If you're making $14,000 a year, you get no help at all, and as a result you could pay up to $4,000 a year for your insurance, and of course there's no way somebody could do it on that kind of income. I got to tell you, I feel like we're being suckers here. You know better than I do. They're going to pay 100% the first three years. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we got to start taking money out of our state budget to help make up for this. Incomes are increasing in North Dakota. I just don't think this thing's going to bode well in the next four to five years. Stay with us. We're going to keep the senators with us because we all know about this big vote that took place on the amendments for the diversion. What's the future of the diversion? Where does it go from here? Stay close. We'll be right back. And as always, please join our conversation. Go to the website 630pov.com. You can email us there, text us at the number below, and leave us voice a message. Welcome back again with us live from Bismarck, Senator Judy Lee and Senator Tyler Axis. I want to visit with you both about the future of the FM diversion project. Heated debate Tuesday on the Senate floor. Senator Lewick out of the Wapaton area put in the amendments, hey, no money out of the state unless the diversion's fully funded. That passed 24-23. We come back on Wednesday. That got wiped out, I believe, 29-17. Senator Lee, I want to start with you. You've been serving since 1995. Tell us what happened between Tuesday and Wednesday to switch the vote so much. I think it was really important for people to have some of the other facts about what was going on. And that, that is what happens. This is very fluid at this time of the year. Senator Axness and I were just discussing that. And there was additional information. It's important to know that the federal government does not write one big check. This comes incrementally, as we see from the announcement this afternoon. There, is, there are two pots of money. The larger amount actually available to us is through the Corps of Engineers budget. And that money will continue to flow to various parts of this project as it moves forward. So both the planning and the implementation is important. And there are uh, protective measures that are being done separately but connected that will continue to add more protection for a community that is absolutely suffering through uh, another high level flood this year. Senator Axness, you're one of three senators that voted no against even the final bill. Obviously, you're a proponent of this diversion. Here's my question for you. Let's say hypothetically, myself and my family, we live in Hickson, Bakke subdivision. What do you say to my family? What do you say to me knowing that, hey, my, my house is probably going to get wiped out and I can't sell it? Well, you know, I, I think a majority of us uh, ha do understand the concerns of people upstream. But the thing is, this is such an important thing. Many of the people that live in Hickson and Oxbow work in the Fargo-Moorhead area. Um, so when we talk about protecting the city, we're talking about protecting the economy. And it's not necessarily accurate that they're going to be losing their homes. Uh, this diversion is the best viable option, according to the experts, that uh, protecting the, uh, the entire region from massive flooding that keeps occurring year after year. And if we just need to put the best step forward in getting the protection that we need for the entire region. For both of you, I need a yes or no answer. Senator Axis, I'm going to start with you. Do you think what's currently in this bill stands as it is so they don't need full federal funding? When this thing's all said and done, the session is over, is this bill going to say, hey, we don't need full federal funding to get state dollars for the diversion, yes or no? I believe that it'll be come out as is after amendment uh, yesterday. Senator Lee, you agree I with agree that? I agree that it'll move forward as it is. All right, to yes, both of I you. Do. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. We know it's been a very rigorous session, so we appreciate your hard work. Keep it up. We look forward to having you back on the show. And as always, stay with us. Go to our website, 630pov.com. Join our conversation. When we come back, we're going to get some more of your feedback and a very special soundbite I'm going to share with you. Email us. 
text us at the number below and also you can leave us voicemail messages. We'll be right back. Hurry in for the final days of